SN13 is looking at angles and triangles, and then 13.1 is the triangle sum theorem, which you probably learned the triangle sum theorem at some point, even if you don't recognize, like, the name of it. It just basically is a theorem that tells us that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So formally, up at the top, the triangle sum theorem the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Interior angles just means like these angles right here, the ones inside the triangle. Um, if we were to kind of write it out into like an equation format, it would be the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is 180 degrees. So for example one, we're going to find the measure of angle B. So this angle inside here. I'm going to write it out using this kind of equation structure. If you don't need to, you don't have to. It's okay. So I'll kind of show you both ways, but I just want to give you kind of the more formal version first. So basically using this equation as kind of like a template. So the measure of angle A is 66.3. So we'll do 66.3. And then degrees plus the measure of angle B, which is what we're trying to find. So plus the measure of angle B and then plus the measure of angle C, which is 45.2. So plus 45.2 degrees is equal to the total amount of degrees inside a triangle, which is 180 degrees. And then now we have an equation with just basically like one unknown, which is the measure of angle B. So we're able to solve for it. So I would combine like terms. I have a 66.3 and a 45.2 that I can add together. So 66.3 plus 45.2 together is 115, no, 111.5 degrees. And then I can bring down my measure of angle B is equal to 180 degrees. And then my goal is to get that measure of angle B completely by itself. So I would subtract over my 111.5 degrees from both sides. And then these cancel out. I would bring down my measure of angle B and then subtract. So 180 degrees minus 111.5 degrees is 68.5. So the measure of angle B is 68.5 degrees. Okay, the, I, like I said, I don't really expect you necessarily to write out that whole thing every single time. Um, if you know, like, two angles inside of a triangle and you know that their total sum of all three angles is going to be 180 degrees, a little bit faster way, it could just be, like, 180 degrees minus the two angles you do know, so 66.3 degrees minus 45.2 degrees. Um, you could just plug that all into a calculator and end up with the same exact answer. But um, it's up to you which way you do it. I don't really care as long as you get to the correct answer. Um, and you're, of course, able to kind of like show the use of the triangle sum theorem in the future. Okay, so example two. In the following figure, um, this is read as line AC is parallel to ray df so it's saying that this is parallel to this and then for the second part the measure of angle acb which is this angle right here is 125.8 degrees they also put that on the picture which is nice they also put that the lines are parallel as well with these little arrow guys is another way of showing that lines are parallel or a line and a ray in this case are parallel and then um, the measure of angle D is 51.7. That's given to us as well. So all the information they tell us is also kind of labeled, which makes life a little bit easier for us. So um, it's asking us what is the angle measurement of ECD. So ECD e is the vertex. So it's this angle inside here. Um, I like these problems because they're kind of like little puzzles and there's more than one approach you can take to find it. Um, it's definitely not given to you right away. We're going to have to find a couple of angles first before we can get there. Since we only know this one angle right here, we can't just like subtract from 180 because we don't know these two 
sorry, we don't know those two angles, so we can't just subtract the two that we know from 180. Um, this goes back to some of like the new vocab that we've learned, specifically about the corresponding angles, like with a transversal. So if we picture that this is a transversal, it's cutting two parallel lines, um, well, like a parallel line and a ray, I guess. Um, but that's besides the point. Um, so it creates like some corresponding angles, which corresponding angles are the ones that are in like the same relative position, but they're at a different intersection. So if this is one intersection and then this is the other intersection and we can like for the sake of looking at the corresponding angles, this side of the triangle, it doesn't really matter right now. So I'm just gonna cover it up in case it's kind of confusing. So we're looking at those two green intersections. Um, we know like this angle, which means that we know this angle because those are corresponding because they're both like on the upper left kind of section of the two intersections. Or of the two separate intersections. So if this is 125.8 degrees, so is this. So 125.8. And then that's kind of the ticket to unlocking all the information that we know. So I'm going to erase like some of the highlighting and stuff. Um, but we now know that, what is this? Angle F, E, C is 128 degrees as well. If we know that, then we can also find this angle because they're supplementary. So remember, supplementary angles, they create a straight line, like they add up to 180 degrees. So if this whole angle in total would be 180, then I can take 180 and subtract 125.8 to get that interior angle. So we do 180 degrees minus 125.8 degrees, and that will give us this angle. So 120, or sorry, 180 minus 125.8 is 54.2. So 54.2 degrees, that's what that interior angle is on the other side. So 54.2 degrees right here. And then, like I was saying, so. I'm going to add that word. These are supplementary. Um, let's see. I'm trying to figure out the best way to add it. So these two angles are supplementary. That was, I think, another new vocab word. That means that they add up to 180 degrees. So supplementary is sum to 180. So if you know they're supplementary, which means they form a straight line, um, and you know one of the angles, you just subtract the angle from 180 to get the other one. Okay, and then now we know uh, two out of the three angles inside the triangle. So we know this is 54.2 right here. And then we also know this is 51.7. So now we can use like the triangle sum theorem to find that missing angle up here, or the one like we we're actually supposed to find just based on the original problem, which was ECD. Okay, so to find it, um, if you want, you can set up like this big equation right here, or you just kind of take a little shortcut. You do 180 degrees minus the two interior angles that you know, so minus 51.7 degrees minus 54.2 degrees, and then that's going to give you the measure of angle E, C, D, which just one more time, I know I've said it a few times, it's E, C, D with the vertex in the middle, so it's this one that we're looking for right here. Okay, so calculator, or in your head if you really feel like it, 180 minus 51.7 and then minus 54.2 is 74.1 degrees. So the measure of angle ECD is 74.1 degrees. Okay, before we go on to 13.2, um, like I was kind of saying, with a problem like this, and you'll see like a lot of these in the future, this was not the only way to do the problem. So like if you did a different way and you still got that same answer, that's totally fine. Like is you're just kind of using... I guess like 
different angles or like a different strategy like we could have um talked about maybe i'm trying to look at it quickly but we could have used like vertical angles we could have found like a different corresponding angle as well um there was different approaches that could have been taken so if you did it a different way got the same answer don't stress okay so 13.2 is about isosceles triangles an isosceles triangle is a triangle with at least two congruent sides. So right here, isosceles triangle is a triangle with at least two congruent sides. Congruent means like the same length. Um, the two congruent sides are called the legs and the third side is called the base. So in this triangle, like right below, um, this would be the base. And then these are the legs the ones on the left and the right side. Um, it could be like twisted, you know, so the base could be on the side or even on top, but the two congruent sides, the ones that have the same exact length, those are called the legs. And then the third side, the kind of like odd man out is the base. Okay, so new rules to add. Um, the first one is the base angles theorem. So if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So in this like graphic right here on the left, what that means is that if these two sides are the same length, then the angles that are opposite them are going to be the same measurement. So opposite is like if I take my like side and I draw an arrow coming directly out of it, that's pointing at its opposite angle. And then likewise over here, that's pointing at its opposite angle. So I would mean that this angle and this angle are congruent. That's what that base angles theorem means. And then the second one, converse of the base angles theorem, so it's just switching the order. So if the base angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. So in this case, this would be like, um, we don't know that these two sides are congruent. We do know that these two angles are congruent. So the base angles, or sorry, the converse of the base angles theorem says that, you know, if these two angles are the same measurement, they're congruent to each other, the sides opposite of them. So draw an angle or draw a side, sorry, draw an arrow straight from the angle that'll point at the opposite side same thing from the other angle, that's enough to say that these two sides are congruent to each other as well. And then the third thing, the corollary, if one angle in a triangle is a right angle, then the other two angles are complementary. Complementary means that there's a sum of 90 degrees. I'm just gonna draw like a little sketch of what that's talking about here. So like if I have a right angle, that's a bad angle, sorry. If I have a right, that's still bad, but it's okay. If I have a right angle or a right triangle, that means that like just automatically, there's only 90 degrees left in the triangle for the other two angles because, you know, the total is 180 degrees, but 90 is taken up by that right angle. So if I subtract 90 from 180, I only have 90 degrees left to split between the two remaining angles, which means that they have to add up to 90, which would make them complementary. Sample one says in the following figure, segment BD, which is this one right here, is a bisector of segment AC, which is this one right here. A bisector is something that cuts something exactly in half. So in this case, it's bisecting a segment. So it cuts it into two congruent segments. So that means that the distance between D and C is the same thing as the distance between D and A. So since DC, segment DC has that one tick mark, we can also put that one tick mark between A and D to show that those two lengths are congruent. And then the next piece of given information, it says that segment CD is congruent to segment BD. So CD is right here, BD is right here. Um, those both already have the one tick mark, so we don't have to add anything there. That's kind of given in the figure. 
And then the last piece is the measure of angle C is 45 degrees. That's labeled as well, so we don't need to add anything there. And then we're asked for what is the measure of angle A. So we're trying to find this angle inside here. Um, first thing that we can do to find it is I'm going to refer back to the base angles theorem. So for the base angles theorem, it says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So for right now, I'm only going to focus on this bottom triangle. I'm not going to focus on like the whole big triangle or the smaller one, kind of the upper left. So the base angle theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, which we have two sides that are congruent, so DC is congruent to BC, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So if we know that BD, the angle opposite BD is 45 degrees, that means that the angle opposite of segment DC is also going to be 45. So that means that inside here, this would be 45 also. So I'm going to erase some of that clutter and then go ahead and fill in my 45 degrees. And then um, same thing, we're still just going to focus on this bottom triangle. So now that we know two angles, we know these are both 45, we can find the third angle that's using like the triangle sum theorem where they all have to add up 280 degrees. You might know by looking at the figure what the missing angle is, but just in case it's ever difficult to tell, you could take 180 degrees and subtract the two angles that you know. So minus 45, minus 45 degrees, you'd be left with 90 degrees. So this is a right angle, and you can just label it with a square. And then now we kind of have all the information we need from that like bottom triangle, so we can start shifting to the one on the upper left. So right here, the right angle that we just found, the one that I have in green now, and the angle that's on the other side of it, the one that's in purple, those are supplementary because they form a straight line. So if they're supplementary, they add up to 180. So if we do 180 minus the 90 degrees that we know right here, we're left with another 90 degrees. So that means that the one on the other side would also have to be a right angle. So now we know this is a right angle. Um, and then we can take a con kind of like a combination of the base angle theorem and the corollary to sorry, corollary, um, to kind of prove what angle A is going to be or what the measure of angle A is going to be. So the first thing I'm going to refer to is the corollary, which it says if one angle in a triangle is a right angle, which we have a right angle right here, then the other two angles are complementary, which means they have a sum of 90 degrees. So now I'm just focusing on this like kind of top triangle right here. So back to the corollary, if one angle in the triangle is a right angle, which we have right here, then the sum of the other two angles, so let's say angle A and then ABD, those, their sum would have to be 90. So between both of these angles, they have to add up to 90 together. And then now we're going to go back to the, I, I know you probably know what it is, but just for the sake of like kind of proving things with these new rules, um, going back to the base angles theorem up here, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, which we have this side and this side that are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So this angle, like A, B, D, and this angle, uh, angle A, those have to be congruent. So they have to be like two of the same exact size angles. So if together they have to be 90, and then each of those angles has to be the same exact measurement, we can just take 90 and then divide it by two to get what is left over. So 90 divided by two is 45 degrees. So the measure of angle A is 45 degrees. Okay, so um, I get it. Probably could have kind of looked at the image and puzzle piece your way through that to find 45 degrees a lot faster. But the objective was kind of more to practice using the like rules that we just learned. So